name is Dr. Aidan Elliott and this is The Complete Guide to Shakespeare. Welcome to this video on Shakespeare's The Merchant of Venice. In the next few minutes I will use just 10 quotes to help you get an understanding of the main themes of the play. Our first quote is the very first line of the play spoken by Antonio. In sooth I know not why I am so sad. Here sooth means truth and the line sets up a question that is not answered in the play, and one that people have speculated about for 400 years. Why is he sad? Is it because all of his wealth is at sea, tied up in goods that he sent abroad? Or is it that he is in love? When a character suggests that Antonio is in love, he quickly rejects it. But his persistent unhappiness does lead us to think that love might be the cause. Our second quote is from Bassanio. To you, Antonio, I owe the most in money and in love. This gives us an indication that not only does Bassanio owe Antonio money, but he also owes him love. The word owe suggests that Antonio has given Bassanio more love than he has received back. Here, Bassanio is also asking for more money to try and woo Portia. And this is, I think, the most obvious source of Antonio's sadness he's possibly losing Bassanio to Portia. Quote 3 shows us the opposite of love, hate. Sherlock says, You call me misbeliever, cutthroat dog, and spit upon my Jewish gabardine. Sherlock is not liked by Antonio because he's Jewish. As a misbeliever, he believes in the wrong religious story. Second, he's a moneylender who not only lends money but charges interest on it. And this practice, called usury, was frowned on by Christians because it was thought to be a form of theft. And by spitting on Shylock's gabardine, or long cloak, Antonio is disrespecting a potent symbol of Shylock's Jewishness. Quote 4. All that glisters is not gold. Although this is a clichéd term, suggesting that what glisters or sparkles is not necessarily valuable, the thought also represents the idea that we cannot tell from a person's exterior whether they are good or bad. Here, the Prince of Morocco is trying to choose the correct casket so that he can marry Portia, but he was unable to judge what is really important about her, her inner character. Quote 5, one of the most famous in all of Shakespeare's plays. Hath not a Jew eyes? Hath not a Jew hands, organs, dimensions, senses, affections, passions? Sherlock is subjected to a great deal of mental cruelty during the play, and now he asks a simple question. Aren't Jews just like everyone else? But note that he draws attention to our physical similarities, our eyes, our hands, etc. Now, we, we do all share these similarities, but that's, of course, not why some people hate other people. They don't like what the other person believes. And that is a much more difficult problem to solve. And that's why no character changes behaviour after hearing this speech. Quote 6 deals with an issue that also recurs during the play, loyalty. I give them with this ring, which when you part from, lose or give away, let it presage the ruin of your love. After Bassanio chooses the correct casket and is free to marry Portia, she gives him a ring and says if he parts from the ring, loses the ring or gives away the ring, it will presage or foretell the ruin of their mutual love. But why does she find it necessary to test him? I think this idea is linked to the earlier quote about all that glisters is not gold. She needs to test his loyalty. Quote 7 I'll have my bond. Speak not against my bond. I have sworn an oath that I will have my bond. The upshot of the abuse that Shylock has suffered is his insistence on having a pound of Antonio's flesh as agreed in his bond or legally binding agreement. This bond is the only thing he can rely on because he knows that the Venetians, as international traders, must maintain their reputation for keeping to legal agreements. But why doesn't he just accept money? Why? Because he wants revenge for being treated like a dog. That is more important to Shylock than money. Quote 8. 
Another very famous quote. The quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. In the face of Sherlock's refusal to accept money, Portia, disguised as a male lawyer, asks him to show mercy, a key tenet of the Christian faith, because Jesus was merciful. He pardoned those who persecuted and killed him. Portia thinks that making this appeal might weaken Shylock's resolve. He doesn't, because Shylock knows that the Venetian Christians are not truly merciful. They preach mercy, but don't practice it. Quote 9. To do a great right, do a little wrong. Bassanio is pleading with Portia, still disguised as a male lawyer, to do something wrong, ignore the bond, to do something right, save Antonio. This raises a number of issues. Should we be able to change the rules when we don't like the result? Can we do a little wrong to achieve what we think is right? Is that justice? Lastly, quote 10. In such a night, Troilus methinks mounted the Trojan walls and sighed his soul toward the Grecian tents where Cressid lay that night. This is part of a highly lyrical passage that sounds as though it was very romantic. Lorenzo and Jessica, Shylock's daughter, are sitting out at night under the stars talking about famous lovers, but the people they mention, Troilus and Cressida, Dido and Aeneas, Pyramus and Thisbe and also Medea, all had relationships that ended tragically. This raises the spectre of mistrust and disloyalty, an issue relevant to this couple but also to Portia and Bassanio. Is Bassanio fully committed to Portia, or will the relationship with Antonio complicate matters? So do look out for some of these features as you read, watch and study the play, and I hope this brief video has given you some new insights that will help you to get greater enjoyment from The Merchant of Venice. Give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe now so that you never miss any of my future posts.